welcome back to another episode of From Tailors with Love. Today, we're talking about The Tomorrow War, directed by Chris McKay. Rotten Tomatoes has this at 54% with the critics, 80% with the audience. The costume designer on this is Betsy Hyman, whose filmography includes Red Dragon, Out of Sight, Green Book, to name but a few. And I'm pleased to say Betsy's on the show with us today. Welcome back, Betsy. Hello. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> You're back. Great to have you on. Uh, Betsy, when, when I had you on for the Green Book, I remember you telling me that you lobbied to be on that film. Did you get cast for this one? Did you lobby for the Tomorrow War? Can you, can you actually lobby you? for this one too? You did. Well, first of all, you know, it started with G in the original draft. It was called Ghost Draft. So I was on a roll with all movies that started with G, Godless, Green Book. So I thought, why not? Ghost Draft, right? Let's go. But yes, I did lobby for this one. I had a feeling. I just, well, as I explained to you, I really thought Chris McKay did an amazing job with, wait for it, folks, Lego Batman is the most emotional Lego movie. And this man, Batman, and Chris McKay has, have heart. And I just felt like this is a guy that I would like to do his first live action film. I am interested in helping him get his image in his head onto the screen. So I did. I called once again. I called my agent, Ann Murtha, and I said, Ann, I need a meeting with this movie. And she thought I'd lost my mind, but I guess I didn't. Because people like the movie, right? Oh, the movie's, well, it's, it's smashed all streaming records. Congratulations. It's a huge hit. Um, I think it's it the most streamed movie either on Amazon Prime or whatever. It's, it's done well, amazing. 2021, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, some of the, I mean, you're not a stranger to the blockbuster movie, though, the action blockbuster. You've done, like, Rush Hour Free. Um, you've, you know, you've been, you've done A-Team. So mm -hmm. how did you prepare for this one differently? Well, every film is different. I think every designer you talk to has a different approach. And this one, I started with science fiction research and I started with army and military research like how often do they change the uniforms what, you know when did they go from this style to this style even in in modern there's a cutoff for digicam to what they you know so we even had to get it right in the in the present day before we went into the future and I've done a few military things but I just um I think going forward as from a fashion point of view, which I rarely take that point of view, oddly. It's like now we're in the 90s. We're always about 20 years back, you know, and, and trends repeat themselves. So I kind of approached it. I kind of did the math, you know, and then uh, Chris and I talked, Chris McKay and I talked about what colors we wanted to use, how we're we going to shoot it low light, what was going to show up, what was going to be, you know, and we came up with a palette for the film, for the future military. And, um, and then I did various designs for that. And he liked one. And we tested by printing it on fabric. I found this really great uh, Japanese cotton ripstop that had some stretch in it but it looked like just regular ripstop which is an army fabric and printed the design on the fabric and made a sample pair of pants and you know kick the shit out of it so you will see what happens to it and um anyway uh yeah you know we worked with it we saw how it would age down and you know and then we had the best fit model ever known to man in the form of chris pratt yeah he Yesterday early on, he's a producer on the film, and he was just so amenable to helping me work this out in terms of the wearability, the durability, everything we needed. I tried it all on Chris. And that's right. very rare that you have that participation so early of your, you know, star, and that he's so delightful, which he is. Interesting. And well, he sounded like a lot of fun on some of the clips I saw behind the scenes, the stuff that he released on social media. And I, I get the feeling he was really, really proud of this film, like being executive producer, but also just, you know, having a lot of good fun on the set and keeping everyone else entertained. Um, did you, did he bring any ideas as well? Because I know that 
when we spoke about Vigo Mortensen, for example, bringing in like old retro clothes from his granddad, did did uh, did Chris come to the table with any ideas? No, but um, he was very collaborative with me. For example, I started out with the knee pads on the outside of the pants. And he said, you know, I don't really think that that looks great for me. I, you know, and I said, you know, you're right. In the future, it should be a sleeker. And then I found out actually that Patagonia was supplying the army with this new kind of knee pad that fit inside the pants. Mm. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. And um, so, you know, he said, you know, he gave me that inspiration. He was very inspiring, but he, he you know, he, I mean, people know what they like. They know what looks good on them in most cases. And, and um, I think he and I just were sort of on the same track. How do you find out about these things, Betsy, just from a research point of view? <laughs> like, <are> where, <laughs> how, how do you do it? I, like, I mean, like, for example, if you, if, if you want to know about certain brands, do you have like a certain news feed that you check, like a, a Mr. Porter, or do you kind of have certain brands you keep an eye on? Can you give I'm me a window that, into that? I'm not built that way. No? Um, God, I don't know. I mean, I... I just research. I research, research, research. And I, I think about the character as if he was a real person. Here's a guy who's been, he's teaching school. He's an excellent teacher. His heart's not in it. He really had higher hopes for himself. He's a little on the sad side. He's a little like, uh, you know, so I wanted him to be a little frumpy in the beginning, like cardigan sweater, you know, drag out. I love the that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you gotta have that. And and then it's like he's back to army guy. You know, he was a trained, he did tours of service. He was, you know, and so he has a lot of knowledge in a lot of areas. And all of a sudden, all that comes out and all of a sudden he's the leader again. So, you know, you go from that aspect like, okay, here's the sad guy to the proud guy. <laughs> and that's ref reflected in his silhouette. So yeah. that's how I do it. I just read the script. And, the, and we talk, I talk with my director, I talk with my actor. And I don't know, I just, I don't really know. It's, um, I just tune in and the station becomes clear. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a very poetic way of saying it. I, I feel like I blindsided you with that. But just to give you an example of my life, when, when Anastasia wakes up in the morning, she goes straight to the Alexa and goes, give me my daily news feed. So she has that triggered up and then Bloomberg will hit out the headlines, CNN, whatever. She tries to get a balance of left and right. And then she's got like five beats of important stuff that gets her through. And I'm struggling to kind of transcend that into like menswear world. <laughs> you know, give me GQ's headlines or give me X. I'm just wondering if there was any kind of specific kind of broad things you look at. Well, I would say to you, if I was advising you, oh, please. that um, if you feel like looking at GQ, look through it and maybe something will catch your eye. And you might say, hey, I could wear that. But I would prefer it if it was navy. I wouldn't have my pants so short because it looks like I'm avoiding a flood. I'd, I'd make them a little longer, but I like the silhouette. You know, you can find inspiration everywhere. And uh, does that make sense? That does make perfect sense. Thank you, Betsy. Let, You're welcome. <laughs> I, I've gone off the grass, forgive me. Um, <laughs> I'm all right. I think that's why we like to do this together. <laughs> I, I've actually, talking of Navy, I've tried to go on for the, for the polo, the Chris Pat uh, fight polo. Looks quite good on you. Thank you. Did you have any particular... length is good? I can dissect your polo if you wish. Yes, please. Yeah. Well, if this the is sleeve a... length was a half an inch shorter, we'd see more bicep, which is better better for the action hero. Yeah. But for you, well, I think the length is perfect. <laughs> Thank you. This is actually the the Sunspell Riviera one that Daniel Craig wore in uh, Casino Royale. Not the exact one, but they still sell those. Very popular amongst Bond fans. Sunspell is wonderful. I love it. Did you look for any brands specifically for for any of the actors in this film? What was it? Yes, there was something that we liked. No, everything was made to order because I needed so many. Right. Um, like the, you know, Damien's red t-shirt. That's the whole story about making that red t-shirt. Um, all of the uniforms, like I, I told you, were it was 
you know, camouflage of the future. And then I got this crazy idea. We'll see. I was looking at research, military research, and I saw a Saudi Arabian military person, and he was wearing a sweater. I don't know why in the desert, but that gave me the idea that I wanted to knit my camouflage and make it into a military sweater. Ah, nice. And um, was very lucky if you want some brand names. So my colleague, Kate O'Connor, who I've been working with on and off since Vanilla Sky, she's a knitwear designer. Um, and at, and so I called her for help because I said, I want to do it with the army patches across the shoulders and across the back. And, you know, and then I want to knit the camouflage. And she talked the fellows who do the knitwear for the row, they work out of downtown Los Angeles to knit my sweater. Ah, okay. That wears that sweater. Several of the people, we did a run of them, a run of those sweaters. And some, several people are running around in them, but most importantly, Chris Pratt. And it came out beautifully. And, and so there's a line. I got the people from the road and knit my sweaters. Nice. <laughs> That's how I do it. I throw myself on the mercy of people who know more than I do. And <laughs> ask them to make my dreams come true. You know? I love that. I, I, I love the story more. Is it the, the lady that knitted Mahersha Ali's? Um, oh, my Venus. God. I know. That's fantastic. The, on the previous Honestly, I've got a thing about knitwear. I always have knitwear wherever I go. You do, but you've got a great eye for it. So. Um, Betsy, I want to talk about, well, talking loosely around biceps, we've got to talk about J.K. Simmons' biceps. I mean, he got in some ridiculously good shape for this. Did you have to, uh, <laughs> did you have to show those off there, like put them in best yeah. specifically? Yeah, that is flaunted. Come on. Thank you. Thank you for that. He looks great. Thank you. And, He's uh, great. Oh, I love that guy. I have to say, we had the greatest crew. I love each one of them was such an individual, and I love them so much. And J.K. in particular, I just he's, you know, I appreciate uh, his talent and the hard work he puts into getting ready for a job, doing a job, and he's just, a, you know, he and Chris, they're all just real straight shooters on this movie. We tell it like it is. We can have frank conversations and get on with. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's almost a bit of that sliding into the film. So J.K. Simmons has always got this great watchable intensity um, to him that I think just makes him quite mesmerizing. But the whole scene where he comes back and he has to enlist his father to help him fly into Russia and he's like, I need your help. It's really difficult for him to ask that because of obviously the nature of their relationship. But instead of having this huge fleshed out conversation, J.K. just goes, I'll get my coat. And then, and then they're off to the next, you know, cut through the crap cake. We're on to the next scene. Let's go get the bad guys. Well, interestingly, the coat, because, you know, I'm big on sweaters and coats mm. in my range. That's my range, sweaters and coats. I don't know. I can't do much else. But that particular coat was a Levi's brand leather Levi jacket. Ah. Nice. I know a friend of ours in the community. Um, he does Banff style Nick and I know he's going to do a special oh, feature. He's going to do a special feature on that jacket. I know he's going to be studying it and scrutinizing it. Was it a, a one-off because it's vintage, or again, did you have to get duplicates? Oh no, we had Multiples. a few. Okay, so you know he has to have one, and then we didn't know if we were going to see him flying the plane, so. The pilot has to have one mm -hmm. and you know so we needed a few we needed a few interesting well looks terrific did you have to fly as well did you get to go to iceland i think it was where they filmed that oh um i could have gone to iceland but no i did not go i had stuff i needed to prepare for when they returned from iceland and we had already established do you know that what i'm talking about when i say we already established the costumes that would be working in iceland Right. And so I, I was sad not to go. It would have been a wonderful trip, but I didn't go. Well, it, it looked pretty cold, so maybe a bullet dodge. <laughs> yes, they were sending me back pictures like of ward they have these wardrobe vans that look like a good humor truck, which is like the ice cream trolley or something. <laughs> and it's like buried in the snow and they just leave it there. And right. they bring the clothes to the van. 
to the man. Oh, <laughs> the man just stays there until the spring and it unfreezes. I mean, I, I checked on IMDb just now. They said that they'd never filmed in this location before. No one had ever filmed there. And I think they even found some bodies down in a, a deep fissure, like from 1940s that had just frozen over. So uh, it sounds like a very spooky and ethereal place to work. Wow, I didn't know that. Thank you for telling me. Uh, well, you know, IMDb is the gospel, isn't it? There's no, there's no false news on IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> Um, no, that's not being verified by anything, by the way. That's just uh, that's internet gossip. But anyway, um, Betsy, where did you see the film? Because it didn't get a theatrical release, which is a shame. But I mean, accessible to everyone, obviously on Amazon. I'm a subscriber, so you know, a plus for me. But did you get to uh, do a special screening at all once it was released? There was a special screening. I unfortunately missed the, the party, the screening, seeing everybody. So. I watched it at home, just like everybody else. Oh, well, it was a fantastic watch. I've got to say, I, I enjoyed the absolute heck out of this film. I felt like it, it turned a lot of uh, genre cliches on its head at times. Uh, and I won't go into specifics, but I think people that have seen the film will, will kind of know it has a good knowingness about it. It doesn't want to get wrapped up in the whole time leap back and forth you know all the physics it doesn't really do what terminator genesis does which is just yeah. get kind of tangled in its own narrative so it it touches on it and then it just goes accept it we all know where we are let's move on um and then it has that tenderness side that we were speaking about offline about the father and the daughter relationship there's a lot of that that, that goes on but again it has the humor blended in so it's a nice melting pot of everything and, and just a really good romp and it's loud <laughs> i love it that it's loud very loud and um yeah i do like the the humorous asides you know i and i laughed a lot like sam richardson in the fitting room you know had us all on the floor i can't even explain it to you i always have snacks for my actors because it could be a while and i don't want them to just leave because they're hungry mm -hmm. so i <laughs> was putting the the um doing Sam's, which was a real military, U.S. military army, you know, his transition from shorts to military. And he was hungry and I gave him a bag. He had found a bag of Doritos and then he got these Doritos in the pocket of his bullet, his like, you know, what do you call that? Bulletproof vest, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's Flak right. jacket or whatever. And he started like, oh, I think I have a Frito now. Oh, it's a Dorito, oh. And I just started taking pictures. And I have like every frame of this whole routine <laughs> he was doing with his army uniform and Doritos. We were laughing so hard, we could hardly go. We, I mean, it just was so much fun. They're all, they were all just, you know, the, the, the military, the civilian military, that was really interesting for me to do because they were going to go through the muck and the mire. So there had to be a million of them. And they were completely modern. But, you know, um, it, it was such a challenge. And I don't know if you can even tell when you look at the movie how hard the costume team worked, I mean, on that film to, to age it down, to make it like, are we on yellow slime today? Or is this real blood? Or what do we, which color, you know, we have people. I had a big crew and everybody did such a fabulous job. And um, like, like an inside thing that you probably don't notice is the character Damien. Mm. He had on that red t-shirt mm -hmm. and everybody, you know, studio and everybody was like, oh, we love that, we love that, we love some color. That was great. Well, we, I just like that color and it ages, the kind of red fades out and ages well. So, um, but anyway, we had a t-shirt on him that we made. Um, and it was, the logo on it was, it rains love. Oh, yeah, he, I remember that, yeah. I know, but I just thought that was so funny as he's just like killing white spikes, killing everything. It's like, it rains love. And I, that was, that was my little funny joke to go along with all their on-camera jokes. <laughs> Did you have, to, I just thought, I mean, it's basically a film where the civilians have to go to war, um, mm -hmm. which I love about that because you, could, you then get to have fun with... 
like the, the kind of civilians not knowing anything tactical, not knowing anything about like military training. So then by that extent, you don't have that kind of real gritty intensity where people are knowing what to do with hand signals and whatnot. So you get to have a little bit of fun with that in the script. But you get to have like issues with like everyday civilians might want to wear common brands with logos and stuff like that. And then you have licensing issues with people going, well, you can't just wear that because Nike won't let you wear that on screen. Do you I have don't have that? issues because I'm designing the costumes. They don't, <laughs> come, they don't but, come in with, I'm wearing this. It's like, no, sorry, no. <laughs> but they have to have like a, an off the peg feel to them, I'm guessing, because they're literally just. Well, they do. And they did. And we shopped a lot of it, but mm. we shop stuff that we know we can use. Okay. Nice. Well, it looks terrific. Betsy, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Very helpful, but I'm kind of No, no, no. I am honestly I'm so glad that the film is, is terrific because like these these blockbusters, uh they don't always um come over to the small screen well in terms of like you, you feel like you should be watching at the cinema. And and obviously I'm gonna miss it at the cinema, but it's still translated really well to uh to the television yeah. and uh enjoyed the heck out of it. Should we just in memoriam for a minute. Oh, Mr. for Chris. Mr. Laverty would be. He would, the third, yeah. The third blob on the screen. I know and he. I, so he would be that. asking. He would be asking the the good questions, <laughs> and the insightful <laughs> ones. But Betsy, what was your like your first interactions with Chris? Can you remember? He interviewed me for his book, hmm. and we just got on really well, laughing, laughing, laughing. And then before I. <clears throat> did Godless. I came over to London just to get away and I just wrote him and I said, I'm in London. I don't want to, I want to put a face with a name because I just thought he was so astute. His questions were so marvelous. He really cared and we had a laugh. So we had a cup of tea and champagne. He came into town. I had no idea he like lived miles away, like in another part of your country. Oh yeah. He, you know, he came down and I was so shocked to see this guy like the steampunk, he was very steampunk back then, like steampunk guy covered in tattoos. I thought, oh my God, I'm so glad I wanted to put a face with a name because I would never have envisioned this in a million years. And that was our first encounter. Oh, that's really sweet. And it, no, it was great to have you and him on at the same time because I felt like he was a, a bit of a gateway for us to get to know each other. Um, Absolutely. That's so. why I wanted to give a shout out to him and just say how all us costume designers that encountered him really appreciated and respected what he brought to yeah. the party and he will be missed. He will be missed. Um, as I said on a, I think it was a previous episode, I think he had class and style beyond clothes. He was always someone that was willing to help us, me especially, if that's either just by coming on the show and talking about clothes or introducing me to uh, other people that would be great guests then he was always happy and he would, he would always raise his hand and, and do anything for us so uh, one of the good eggs uh, was chris betsy uh, in the meantime great to have you on Thank uh, you, i won't great. ask you i won't ask you what you got coming up next because i feel like that's going to be under wraps we will do another movie with chris mckay director Are of you? the tomorrow one. oh that's good news uh, is it something quest i saw his imdb no, uh, no, we're going to do another movie in New Orleans. Completely ah. different subject matter. Okay. Well, I'll we're doing a to. dark comedy horror movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. That sounds, that sounds terrific. Are you going to be uh, shooting that in a, in a couple of months? So you've got some preparation to do over the next few weeks? Yeah, well, I don't start prepping until August, and then we'll start shooting after that. Right, okay. Well, best of luck with that. Can't wait to see that. All right. All right. Until next time. Thanks, Betsy. See you soon. Bye.